Hi, I'm Chris, and today we'll be talking about STL's Echo Soprano Ocarina. The Echo Soprano comes in blue and white and black and white. The black and white pattern looks kind of like marble. I chose blue and white because it reminds me of clouds. The ergonomics and breath requirements make the Echo Soprano an excellent first ocarina for beginners, but at the same time, intermediate and advanced players will appreciate its powerful resonant tone which is appropriate for ensemble or solo performance. Because of its versatility, if this is your very first ocarina, you may not feel the need to upgrade for some time. The Echo Soprano is fully chromatic and plays in the key of C from A5 to F7, giving it a range of 1 octave plus 5 for a total of 13 notes. Another way to describe it is that it plays 1 octave higher than the Echo Tenor. Here's the scale. The Echo Soprano is a little over 5 inches long, and it's about 3 inches wide. Compared with the Echo Tenor, you can see how much smaller the Soprano is. It weighs about 3 ounces, which is about the same, just a little bit more, as my Swiss Army pocket knife. So here they are next to each other for another size comparison. The Echo Soprano is a transverse ocarina with a round body, and both ends are curved and tapered. The mouthpiece is angled forward slightly to relieve strain on the wrist, which is great for longer practice sessions. It's made of glazed ceramic, so the texture is smooth like glass with a shiny, glossy finish. For ocarinas with a round shape, quickly covering the subholes can be a little more challenging. So both of the subholes on the Echo Soprano have been moved a little bit closer to the main holes to help accommodate this need, making it easier to play. Because of its small size, players with larger hands may find that their fingers feel a bit crowded on the Echo Soprano. It's also important to consider the pitch range of the instruments. If you have large hands, or if you prefer a deeper tone, you may prefer the Echo Tenor instead, which is a comfortable fit for most hand sizes. As a general rule, children under 9 usually prefer soprano ocarinas, while 9 and up can usually play either one comfortably. Soprano ocarinas tend to have lighter, easier breath requirements than their tenor counterparts, and this is true for the Echo Soprano. Its overall volume is fairly loud for soprano ocarina, which makes it ideal for playing outside and also for performing because other instruments won't drown it out. Overall, it requires more breath throughout the range, so the amount of breath needed to play the lowest notes below tonic requires only a minimal adjustment in breath pressure. Because of this, low A has a louder volume than other soprano C ocarinas from STL. Because there is less variance in the amount of breath from the lowest to the highest notes, I would describe it as less dynamic, but easier to play with slightly rising breath requirements. In my opinion, the Echo Soprano is one of the easiest to play glazed ceramic ocarinas currently offered by STL. Because of their texture and easy breath requirements, I think the plastic and Florentine ocarinas are probably still the most beginner-friendly, but for a beginner that prefers the look and style of a glazed ceramic ocarina, I would definitely recommend the Echo Soprano. It's also great for any player looking for a soprano ocarina with a strong, resonant tone, or for a collector looking for a unique piece for their collection. The Echo Soprano has a rich, vibrant tone which is bright and projects very well. It is extremely resonant and really seems to sing. While less responsive than an ocarina with a thinner shape, it's still very easy to play vibrato. There is also a slight texture across the range which gives the Echo its bright singing quality. I definitely recommend using your neck strap with the Echo Soprano until you become comfortable with the ergonomics and can confidently play the highest notes. While plastic ocarinas can easily survive a fall, your Echo Soprano, like any clay ocarina, is much more likely to break if you drop it. 
Because of its unique shape, you may want to develop or modify your existing technique for playing the highest notes to get the best results for smoother sounding transitions and trills. To discover the best technique for playing the highest notes, I recommend experimenting with different techniques and using the one that works best for you. Depending on your style or the shape of your hands, or even which ocarina you're playing, you may find that one technique works better than another. For instance, I use one technique for ocarinas like the Echo that has a longer, more tapered end, but I use a different technique for ocarinas that have a rounder shape, such as the Zelda tenor. Because of its soprano range, bright tone, and louder volume, I think lively upbeat music sounds especially nice in the Echo Soprano. Because the breath pressure is relatively even, it's great for faster pieces like jigs and Celtic music because you don't need to vary your breath pressure as much. I also really enjoy performing on the Echo Soprano because it's just really cute for an ocarina, and usually when I'm done playing, people want a closer look at it. That's about it. Thanks for watching.